Hello, this is Broyer, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series for Civilization VI. Continuing with our New Frontier Pass playthroughs. Uh, we've done, what, three of the civilizations already? Uh, we've got fourth and fifth one coming up, hopefully soon. Uh, I'm not sure which one we're going to play today yet, maybe. I'm not sure. We'll get into it. So let's get into the game. Um, let's see. Let's create our game here. And so we have two leaders that we could choose from. Uh, although, I will say they're probably war... Uh, there's four leaders that are in the game that are relatively new, sort of. Uh, what I mean by that is we have Ambiorix and, uh, as a Basil, Basil, the second here, uh, for Byzantium and Gaul. But we also have, uh, a new, um, Catherine de' Medici. Uh, what are they calling this? They're calling these, uh, I'm not sure. I can't remember what they call these, but they're like, you know, they're kind of like alter egos or something like that. Different, different ways to play, uh, Catherine de' Medici. They also have one down here for Teddy Roosevelt. So a couple new options for those two leaders that could play, make things play a little bit differently. Um, but, you know, I think we'll get to those at some point, maybe. But I think these two are the, the two exciting ones that we have uh, on the plate for today. And, uh, you know, they just released, what, a month or so ago. I just haven't been able to get to them yet because I was finishing up my Ethiopia game. But uh, I don't know which one of these I want to play today. I want to play both. And I'm trying to decide which one I just I want to jump into right now. Probably... What I'm going to do. Uh, any meeny miny mo, I don't know. Uh let's do let's do Byzantium. Honestly, for no other reason than they were announced first, technically, when they when they showed the the civilizations that were there. So we'll just kind of go in the order that they were announced and we'll do we'll do Byzantium here. So let's go jump into the uh, Basil Basil. We'll find out how he's pronounced from Mr. Sean Beam here momentarily. Uh Deity, obviously. Um what kind of map do we want? I'm not really going to be worried about taking advantage of the Droman too much. So I don't really care if we have water, if I had to be perfectly honest. Uh, it's really going to be more about the land and being able to move units around, things like that. Um, we'll leave it on standard game speed. I mean, co co continents is probably a good one just to leave it on. Just have some pretty big land masses and still a little bit of water. Um, we do have this new Highlands map that they've added in, which I might do that one for Gaul when we try to play Gaul later. But I don't know that I need to worry about it right now. Um, honestly, I think we're just going to leave it on continents. Just be normal, plain, boring. Uh, we're going to play on standard. And do I want to enable any of this stuff? Tech and civic shuffle mode. Secret societies mode. Dramatic ages mode. Or apocalypse mode. I mean, part of me wants to play it just like normal. Um... Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I do want to play with these at some point, but I kind of just... You know what? We're going to play as normal. I know it's boring, and I apologize if that's too boring, but it's a new civilization. I want to see how they play just as is. Uh, but I definitely want to jump into some of these at some point. We're just... I just don't know if I'm ready to do that yet. Let's get through. Let's get through this one and maybe Gaul. And if we have time before they release the next civilization, although who's to say we will, uh, then we'll come back to some of these game modes. But uh, for now, I think we're gonna leave them off. Uh, anything in advanced setup I want to change? I don't think so. Uh, there's the random game seed and ma map random seed. If you want either of those for any reason. Um, nope, I think we're good. Let's get into the game. From the first stirrings of life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest, from this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Your enemies will fear you, King Basil II, for you were forged in the fire. Let your cunning and ambition sharpen your blade. Protect your pride and stand against your foes, both within your walls and beyond. So it's Basil the Second. All right, 
So he's got a couple of abilities, and we'll jump into some more of these here in a minute once we can see a little bit more of them. But at least these first two we can talk about. Uh, Porphogenitos, Porphogenitos, something like that. Heavy and light cavalry units do full damage against cities following the same religion as Byzantium. And gain the Tagma unique unit when the Divine Right Civic is discovered. Um, so we do, that's that unique unit right here, Tagma. Uh, so he does have two unique units technically, which is really cool. But, um, you know, our cavalry doing full damage against cities is going to help them out taking out cities. So there is a element of we could go conquest with this guy. Uh, and that, that definitely was going to help us out a lot. But we definitely, we would also want to spread our religion to that city first. So there's a religion component to this guy as well. So you're going to see religion and, com and, and conquest go really hand in hand with, uh, with, with uh, Basil here. Um, and then he's also got taxis. Units receive plus three combat strength or religious strength. For each holy city converted to Byzantium's religion, including Byzantium's holy city. So they're going to have a base plus three from the beginning, assuming they get a religion. If you don't get a religion, you probably should just restart the game. Uh, Byzantium's religion is spread to nearby cities when an enemy civilization or city-state unit is defeated. Uh, you get plus one great profit point from cities with a holy site district. So as soon as we get a holy site down, we'll start getting some great profit points. Be able to get us a religion and kind of go from there. Uh, and we'll see about the Tagma, the Droman, and the Hippodrome here momentarily. Hmm. Interesting. Don't see any edges of the map, so we don't know anything about that yet. Uh, I mean, we're on a little bit of a... Okay, this is a lake, so this is not like a... Uh, any sort of like... Uh, what I'm trying to say. We're not on like a peninsula or anything like that. This is just a lake. Uh, so who knows? Maybe more of the continent comes way down here. Uh, it could open up some, something for like a canal. I've, I've actually never built a canal. I've never had a reason to up until now. Uh, although, if we build the city right here, the ships are going to be able to go through there just fine. So we actually wouldn't... Again, yet again, we technically won't need the canal. Um, at least not from this perspective. So we got crabs right away. That's going to be just a bonus resource. We've got crabs up there. We do have pearls as our luxury. And that is all I'm seeing. Are we sitting on a Plains Hills? We are sitting on Plains Flat. There's Plains Hills right there. No, it's not. That's Wits. I'm sorry. I saw the two production. I thought that was Hills. There's Plains Hills way over here. It would take us three turns to get there. One turn, two turns, and then we establish on the third turn, technically. Which will slow down our growth a bit, but would speed up our production. Because obviously, if we can get two production, we'll, in three turns, we'll gain back whatever production we would have gotten from here in the first place. Let's move our warrior to here. He's going to get a little bit of vision. We're going to see what else is out here. I was going to say, if there's a luxury over here, then I think this would be the right move. Since there is no luxury, I'm less convinced that a move over all the way over to here is going to be beneficial to us. I'm actually thinking about settling right here so that we can gain access to the luxury pretty quickly, um, but also not consume the rainforest, be able to work the rainforest right away. Um, if we want to do that. Because I don't really see anything else down here. I mean, we've only moved once, to be fair. But I don't really see anything else down that way that's going to be beneficial to us. I feel like keeping the reinforcer a little longer could be able... Plus, we can work the plus three food right away. Okay, I like this. It does open up wheat. Oh, there's a river right here. Oh, which would be amazing to settle on, to be fair. But it would take us so many turns to go over there, and we'd be so low in production at that point. I think that's too far behind. I think we settle here. Settle in place. we got fish nearby. we got crabs nearby. We can still get to these crabs. Uh, it does open up the possibility of the canal actually being worthwhile now, because we would need a canal to be able to get through here if we wanted to get to this lake, which I don't know that we want to get to the lake, to be fair. Let's go ahead and settle here. Um, apparently within two tiles of a river, this they could flood. I mean, it's going to affect some of our, uh, you know, districts and things, but not necessarily our core city. So that's okay. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and jump into what some of his abilities are. Uh, so we got the Tagma. It's his unique medieval era unit that replaces the knight. Land units within one tile of the Tagma receive plus four combat strength or religious strength. Again, there's that cohesion between combat and religion. Uh, the Droman is Byzantium's unique classical era unit that replaces the Quadrim. And that has additional range and receives plus 10 combat strength against other units. Not just naval units, any units. So that's going to be very helpful to have. 
Um, and then the additional range. I mean, the Quad Dream's biggest weakness is, is its range. So getting that extra range is going to be a huge deal. Plus, we're on the coast already. So we actually might be able to take advantage of a Droman uh, with this guy early on. That's going to be pretty awesome. And then he's got the Hippodrome, which is a unique unit, uh, unique district, I should say, that replaces the Entertainment Complex, provides plus three amenities, and it's cheaper to build, which is awesome. We're going to want to build these literally everywhere we can because when the Hippodrome building, Hippodrome and buildings in this district are constructed, you receive a heavy cavalry unit of whatever area you're in. Whatever the best heavy cavalry unit you have available to you, you get one of those uh, every time you build the drone and you get, and you get build the, the buildings inside of it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and the free unit does not require resources, one created or to maintain. That's a big deal. Like the vast majority of our army should be coming from building hippodromes, quite frankly, because those are just super cheap units that we're going to be able to do whatever we want with. So cool. It's going to be a lot of fun to play with, I think. Um, research. Okay, we definitely need to get to our uh, holy site as soon as possible. So we're going to go ahead and jump into astrology, grab that, put that down as soon as we possibly can to be able to get us a really, really good religion, hopefully very early on. So getting a little bit extra air score is, is pretty cool. Um, we are going to go with an early scout. We do want to scout out some of this stuff, find some new cities to bots, find other people, things like that. All the normal things that you want to do. There's a goodie hut right away. That's awesome. Hmm. Interesting little bit of this continent. If this is assume, presuming, presumably a continent that we're on, I suppose it could be a large island. Um, but it seems like we're out here on the edge of this continent here. Getting an early pop is really nice. In fact, I should go ahead and... Uh, okay, you are doing the food here. And honestly, there's no reason to lock that in. I think we're actually okay. I'm pretty happy with both of those picks. Hello, Brussels. Early Brussels, huh? Let's see what does Brussels give us. Uh, your cities get plus 15% production towards wonders. I don't usually go the wonder game, as you guys know, with my data games, but getting a little bit of extra production could incentivize us to try. Another hut. Wow. That is really awesome. And there's those early floods that we already knew were coming. Um, we'll have to be a little careful if we want to settle over here, but hey, if they want to keep flooding and increasing the fertilization on the tiles, uh, by the time we do come over here, that will be, that'll be just fine. Progress towards early empire. I would love the progress towards, um, astrology. That would have been nice. Since I don't know that we're going to find a natural wonder super quickly here. Progress towards foreign trade. Wow. What's the, oh, continent. That's right. Okay. Well, that's very helpful. I mean, early empire is a really big one to pick up. Uh, getting that boost is pretty significant. Okay, okay. So far, so good. What do you want, Brussels, by the way? Campus. Well, I mean, we'll definitely get a campus at some point. Don't think we're gonna find a natural wonder. Unfortunately, we're gonna we're gonna hard research that one. If we get a natural wonder before we get to the end, cool. It saves us a few turns. If not, we, we've got to push through that. Unfortunately, I say unfortunately, but we just we got to. Uh, let's get us an early settler. We're already up to three pop. This is a really good time to get us a settler. I mean, normally I'd like to get a second military unit right away, but we're gonna take advantage of that early pop here. I mean, it's kind of a dead end, but it's also a hill which might explore a few things. So we can see something over there. Oh, never mind. I thought that was a dead end. I should have kept going. I don't know why I was th seeing dead end there. Ooh, that barbarian encampment is actually going to be pretty rough. So actually, it was a good accident that we moved back up this way because we do need this warrior to come back home to help defend our city since we are choosing to go settler instead of military unit. Which is a bit of a risk, but it's a calculated risk, I think. Good thing Brussels is being aggressive here. That's going to help us out actually quite a bit. 
Well, it's actually got quite a few units. I mean, we know a scout's going to be coming up this way pretty quickly here. Uh, we're going to need the combat strength versus barbarians. That's that's a given. Uh, the play faith is going to be good for our um, pantheon. I and mean, we're going to pick up foreign trade. Maybe push towards mysticism sooner than I normally do. Really hope the scout pops up over here. No natural wonder. Looks like we're going to have to re get that researched all the way the hard way. Alright, so no scout. We'll be able to sneak through here maybe and cut anything off that's coming through there. More flooding, more fertilization. I don't believe in astrology. Something tells me that river, river is going to be flooding quite a bit throughout this game. All right, so we got our astrology locked out. Uh, I mean, picking up sailing so we can get towards our dromen early on wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, figuring out where horses are, though we don't necessarily need them for our specific cavalry unit, right? Uh, let's see here. That's not where is it? Replace of the night, right? I'm sure it's literally right in front of my face and I'm not seeing it. Or is it in through the civic tree? Hmm. Must be in the civic tree, huh? There it is. Wow. Way over there in divine right. Interesting. Huh. Well, anyway, it doesn't need... Uh, it actually requires iron. It does not require horses. But what I was going to say before I got distracted by the fact that it wasn't this tech tree was it, uncovering horses will at least let us get some um, uh, some of the other cavalry units, which we can then upgrade into other units. Although, again, most of our military we're going to want to get from um, the entertainment complexes. So maybe we care less about them. And if we get them through that, we don't care about the horses, although we could trade away the horses. I see since it's already boosted. I'm tempted to just go sailing up here. Why not? Let's double down on our bonuses that we have. It's like now would be a really bad time to find a uh, natural wonder. Um, I mean, we are a little bit delayed on the holy site. No suitable location. Wow. Really? Oh, because we can't chop down the woods yet. Um, or clear the marsh. We could buy out to here and just put one over there. I'd really like to get a holy site down relatively quickly, to be fair. Could buy out to there. How much would that cost us? 75 gold. I mean, do we want to do that? Delay the settler to get a holy site? Both are incredibly important to get done. We're a long ways away from a Pantheon, even. I think we finish the Settler and then see if we can get a Holy Side down. A lot of flooding over here, though. Whatever city we put down next is going to have a lot of flooding to deal with. But lots of good rivers. I mean, that, there's, there's, that's the other side of it, though. Being next to river is usually pretty good. So I don't know where his scout ran off to, but we should be able to come over here and hopefully stomp on the spearmen a little bit. There's a quadrum over there. It's actually going to be a little dangerous for our barbarian, or our warrior, I should say. Because of the fact that it can damage our warrior along with the spearman damaging our warrior. Like that right there. Yeah, see that right there actually was a really bad thing to find that. Maybe he didn't make a scout. Maybe he only made the spearman and the quadrant then. 
Seems unusual. I feel like they would have already had a scout. Maybe he just did this after the scout or something, after this initial setup. All right. There's a good chance we're dead, which is highly unfortunate. That's a big deal. That is a huge deal to be dead right now. Yep, we are 100% dead. Wow, that's a big deal. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, it is such a massive, massive problem, actually. Because we're going to have nothing to protect our settler now. Wow. I mean, we couldn't have predicted that, necessarily. I mean, sure, he is on the coast, so there's a chance that he has a quadrum. I didn't expect him to have one that soon, necessarily. And usually, he's got a quadrum. He you know, might have already sailed off somewhere else and wouldn't have been sitting right next to his thing. It must have just gotten created, probably. All right, we're going to bring the scout back. It might be able to protect the settler a little bit. I mean, it should be able to. And we'll probably run the settler this way. Wow. That's a big deal, losing that early warrior. Alright, definitely want to get something set up here. Um, I mean, it's got to be this direction. Because we got the scout over there, and we, we don't can't deal with that thing right this second. So... I'm tempted to settle right here, although it is susceptible to flooding. But it gives me access to two rice. It's got cows nearby. Crabs would technically be within range. Um... Wheat, wheat would be within range. Uh, silk, or sorry, dyes would be within range. Yeah, I feel like this, flooding or not, is actually a pretty solid spot. Could also back up to here. Oh, wow. Working a four food right away. It's a pretty big deal. I could also just put it here so it's safe from either flooding, but it's able to take advantage of both floodings. Still can get the rice, can get the wheat, can get... I mean, can get a... Um, aquifer to uh, yeah I don't know it's too far away from the crabs though, although it's not super critical I could still put a city out there on the coast it's a little close to Brussels though that's going to be a little bit problematic I mean, the flooding is going to be so damaged to us over time. But being able to work that four food right away would be pretty significant. I mean, we're going to get housing cap real quick, though, to be fair. I said aquifer. I was like sitting there thinking, I was like, in the back of my mind, I was like, aquifer doesn't sound like right, right? Aqueduct. That other water thingy. Um. Good thing about settling here is that as these continue to flood, they're just going to continue to have more and more food. But again, no housing means it will be hard. I could also just settle right here. I mean, sure, that'll eventually get flooded by the, the, the sea tides. It also means I'm not working this for food right away. I mean, we're going to have a decent number of farms uh, on the rice and on the wheat, which is going to give us a little bit more housing. No, nope, let's go here. I like it. I, I think I like it. I like working that four food right away. Uh, speaking of farms, I would like to start working. Um, hmm. Clearing marshes. Not farms, sorry. I meant housing. Uh, start getting the granary and stuff. Because that's, that's going to be really needed by that city. It's going to be growing so fast. Obviously, chopping some of the other stuff would be helpful so that we can put that holy site down. Let's work on pottery. We know we need the housing for this new city. I mean, it's going to need it super, super fast. Um, we can still go ahead and buy this to put the holy site there. can also buy it over here, but I don't know if that's super useful or not. Um, could put it over here or something. You know, I think this is fine. It's a little bit more money than I would probably like to spend this early, but I think... One of these two spots is actually going to be pretty useful for us. 
Which one do I want? This one's next to three. They're both next to three rainforests. So it really is kind of irrelevant which direction we go with. I don't know if it really matters. Honestly, I, I, there's no, they're both good answers. Again, I could still put it up there. Let's go there. It's not the most amazing holy site, but... Oh, that's right. They don't get adjacency from Reinforce, do they? I'm thinking... What's Forest? Is it, is it Forest? I, I, I think I just misremembered what they are. What Which ones they get from. Yeah, it's woods. Okay. That's okay. Um, I'm still okay with this placement, though. I mean, it's just getting a holy site down. Getting some religion. I'm okay with that. Every nation lives by exchanging. Getting an early trader would be useful. Um, we're still okay with this. I, mean, I could push up to mysticism, be able to get great scientist points, but we're not going to have the uh, the uh, wild card slot anyway, so that's really not that helpful. Let's just go ahead and get early empire. I've already boosted it. Uh, you're kind of in my way, mister. I will chill here for a second and hope that he gets out of my way. So I can move my scout there so that the settler has a place to go. Okay, there we go. Already need more housing in our main city. Not a huge surprise though. Stonehenge, somebody already got Stonehenge. It's a pretty big deal. I don't know if I need to build it right this second because I have so much food available to me. There's some really good towels here. I mean, a holy site could be useful. I mean, obviously, I need war, uh, military units. Let's get a slinger out. Let's get something out as soon as possible. Uh, you know, what? I'm just gonna put you on auto explore at this point. I've seen enough of this to kind of get an idea of where we went. Might want to put cities. Clay must feel happy in the good potter's hand. Reveal horses. I mean, that might be somewhat useful in some way. I mean, it's usually just good to get those first few. Anyway. Hello, Quadrim. Alrighty. I mean, getting a galley out would be useful, obviously, because this mess over here. Um, let's go and get the shrine. We're going to double down on trying to get our religion up and running as soon as possible. Fertilization. Some gold, that's actually helpful. Ah, we might have enough to... Uh... I was going to say get us a warrior, but honestly getting us a trade route to be able to get some early gold might be even better. Because then I can buy a warrior after that. Pretty quickly. Nope, nope, nope. Hit the wrong button. Hit the wrong button. 
Um, I mean, production foods is also good, but let's just get some some gold coming in. I'll let us buy us a unit pretty quickly here. If Hello, there are scout. no dogs in heaven, then when I die, I want to go where they went. Assuming you're from here, right? Because I don't see any other spots down there. I feel like we're going to need archery pretty quickly here. Deal with these barbarians next to us. Another religious uh, civilization. It's going to be interesting. At least it'll be another, uh, probably a holy site that we can go after. Who got the first religion? Uh, an anonymous map. Uh, was not her, so it's an anonymous player, not her. Pantheon. So we're going to double down on the military and religion combo. I mean, something like God of War could be interesting. I have any pa I mean, there's some horses right there, but not a lot of other pasture sites. There's some sheep way down there. Do we have cows somewhere? Oh, that was if I moved up to here. So yeah, we, we did lose those cows, but I could put another city over there. Fishing boats, and we have a few, but not a ton. Camps don't really have anything for that. Uh, production for marsh, oasis, and desert floodplains. Nope, none of that. Plus two amenities and plus two houses can see if you have a holy site district adjacent to a river. I mean, we could definitely put one for these other cities, but that doesn't help us here. Adjacency to desert tiles. It's none of these really jump out at me as like, okay, this is amazing. This is what you got to get. I'm actually very surprised that both the free settler and the free builder pantheons have already been taken. Because I felt like we beeline for this extra faith about as quickly as we could have. I mean, we, okay, never mind. I, I say that. We did finish the settler, to be fair. That, that is true. I guess I could have been working the crabs over here. Or the, yeah, crabs. Or sorry, pearls. Um, over here to uh, to get that faith. Actually, I probably should have. That would have been the better move. Come to think of it. Even though it would have lost us a little bit of food. Production of faith from strategic resources. I mean, we're going to have a couple, probably. It just says, of a holy site district. It doesn't say our... I mean, surely it's our holy site district, right? We're going to be killing units to spread faith. Then be able to get more faith from that. I really feel like... I mean, this would be very unique. I've never taken God of War. Never really felt like I had a reason to take God of War. It would be a very interesting one to take. Why not? Let's double double down on the faith and military combo. Just because it's unique. Is it the best one to take? Maybe not. But I think it's unique and I think it might fit this civilization specifically. Need more housing, need more amenities. What did you just change your thing? Oh no, sorry, it's Band Arbor 9. What do you got? Trading posts in foreign cities provide plus one gold. You want... A government plaza. We're a little ways away from that. We still want the campus. All right, we're going to go ahead and put a cut in there. Um, I'm not sure how we're doing yet. I mean, it's still really early on. Um, I mean, we definitely need to get a few more cities out, especially now that we know that Poland is out there. So we need to get, we need to kind of stake our claim out here for some of this stuff to really set ourselves up for a long-term victory. So, but yeah, we'll go ahead and put a cut in there. When we come back, we'll see if we can get maybe hopefully another city or two down next episode. Maybe. Um, but really start, uh, we got to get out of religion. I mean, if we don't get a religion, we're restarting the game. So we'll see what happens. But I do appreciate you guys watching. Uh, may God bless you. And I hope you join me again next time. Thank you and goodbye.